Imagine being created from the genes of the strongest mage in history. Not only that, but you also get a chance to drink the blood of an immortal vampire, becoming an overpowered demon lord. Tauda is a 12-year-old boy holding on to his life as his parents try to protect him after a car accident. A blonde passerby woman, Yukiheim, listens to the parents' last wish to save their son. Two years have passed since then, and Tauda managed to survive after being adopted by the woman who saved him. He's an energetic young fella who spends his time creating trouble all the time, mostly because he speaks what's on his mind without any filter. But despite all the troubles, he thinks life should be approached with a big smile on his face while being kind, especially to his friends. They're living in the countryside, where Yukaheim acts as a teacher. Tauda and his friends must defeat their teacher to pass the test and move to the capital, New Tokyo, where they can access the Heaven's Pillar, a space elevator used to travel between planets. They try their hardest to defeat her, but she uses magic magic to counter their attempt. They realize it and ask her to teach them magic, knowing that magic is common in the capital, but she always refuses to teach them. One day while visiting his parents' graves, he meets a spirit that tells him that it's waiting for him at the top of the pillar. This gives him some motivation to want to continue learning magic. Takabana, another teacher, feels pity for the boys and agrees to help Tauda and his friends learn magic. But Tauda has no talent for magic, so Takabana gives him another strategy to melt Yukaheim's heart with a gift. Tauda gives Yukaheim a wristband given by Takabana as a gift. She likes the gift as Tauda has never given her anything before. While on her way to school, Tauda's friends ambush and capture her. Takabana appears and knocks them out. He reveals to be a bounty hunter, who's been trying to get her head, an immortal vampire who has lived for 700 years. She tries to use magic to break free, but the wristband nullifies her magic. He pierces her with several metal spikes, and decides to land his finishing blow and decapitate her head. But he's stopped by Tauda who's come to save her. But Takabana teleports and cuts his arm off. Yukaheim breaks from the binding spell, and shields Tauda from losing his head. But Takabana slices her into pieces, Tauda screams as he cannot believe his eyes. His savior and only family, sliced into pieces in front of him, he holds her head. But he gets stabbed and left to death. While lying on the ground in a blood pool, Helpless, Yukiheim tells Tauda a secret. She saved him two years ago by turning him into an immortal vampire, and now to save his friends from Takabana. He must activate his powers by drinking her blood. Tauda, shocked by the news, doesn't waste time. He licks her blood from the ground and immediately turns into a vampire. His cut limbs soon regenerate, and he furiously beats Takabana up with a massive punch. Yukiheim also regenerates and commends Tauda for his courage to stand up for his loved ones. She explains about her past, and that his parents were murdered. Tauda nonchalantly accepts the shocking news, revealing that becoming immortal is a good thing, as he can forever be by her side. Yukiheim decides that they should head for the capital. Tauda leaves his friends behind, as the spirit returns and calls him to the top of the pillar once more. During their journey to the capital, Tauda bumps into Koromaru. They quickly befriend each other, until Koromaru sees Yukiheim and poses to attack her. Koromaru was kicked from her family and was tasked to kill Yukiheim to have the right to return to her clan. He attacks her but Yukiheim being the almighty vampire that she is, easily stops him by stabbing him. Tauda is confused and learns that Koromaru is also immortal. The wounds heal and he tries to attack Yukiheim again. Yukiheim tells Koromaru that she will fight him if he can defeat Tauda first, and without hesitating, Tauda agrees to spar with Koromaru. The two boys begin fighting and Koromaru initially has the upper hand as he's a sword user while Tauda punches his way out of it. Koromaru cuts Tauda's head off, but Tauda quickly sticks it back in place and finishes the fight with a massive punch. As a winning condition, Tauda forces Koromaru to become his best friend and join them on their journey. As they keep walking, Tauda comes up with the best idea to find more immortals and form a team who will help people with their powers. Yukiheim laughs at him because she knows someone who once thought of that. Finally, a convoy of black cars approach them and they welcome Yukiheim back, revealing that she has already formed a team of immortals, UQ holders. In the headquarters, Tauda gets to know that not all immortals are vampires, some are time travelers, and some can revive themselves through game-like extra lives. To join the UQ holders, Tauda and Koromaru are given a test to defeat some of the strongest immortals there. Kora will have to fight Jingoro, and Karin volunteers to fight Tauda as she hates him for being close to Yukaheim. Their test will take place in seven days. The two boys explore the place until they get lost in a tunnel after Tauda hears a voice telling him to come there. They head down the tunnel until they reach deep down a cave where Jinbei dwells. He tasks Tauda to take out a sword that has been stuck in a boulder for a long time. 
He struggles to remove it until he hears a voice telling him how to do it. Jinbei is impressed, but when Taoda tells him that a voice told him what to do, he realizes that the sword is the one who briefed him. He gets mad at the sword but shows Taoda that the sword is a gravity sword that can change its weight. Taoda agrees to take the sword and gets trained by Jinbei there before his test. When the seven days pass and the due day comes, the two boys go to their respective opponents and fight them. Koromaru successfully lands a strike on Jingoro using a technique inspired by Tauda's optimistic technique the day they fought. But Tauda seems to struggle with Karin. They suddenly stop the fight when Tauda hears Shinobu, a girl he's made friends with there, screaming in fear of monsters that were lurking outside their confinements in the basement. They stop their fight and help her. Karin distracts the monsters and Tauda uses the sword and wipes out all the monsters with one hit. Impressed by his strength, Karin counts it as a pass the two boys become UQ holders. They head back to headquarters where they meet with Iku and Kiri, who can turn back time by dying and respawning in a safe point. While heading back, Kiri tells them about Fate, who wants to kidnap Tauda. He's a powerful mage and can defeat UQ holders in a matter of seconds. They arrive at the tower, and they take their positions. Kiri explains the plan and how each member will respond to spotting fate. A kid in a hood will bump into Tauda and leave a mark on him. Tauda gets a video message from Yukaheim explaining fate used to work together with her and Negi Springfield, Tauda's grandfather. But when Negi died, fate turned on his work and wreak havoc on mortals. Fate appears and walks toward Tauda who's hiding behind a pillar. Tauda sees his friends from the countryside right then, walking right next to Fate. He appears from behind the pillar to meet his friends. He tries to avoid meeting Fate by going outside, but they refuse to leave the place. Fate catches up with them and introduces himself. He asks Tauda to join him and head to the tower, but Tauda causes a commotion. Karin appears and saves Tauda's friends by pushing them away from Fate. She and Tauda attack him at the same time. Tauda manages to cut his magic barrier with his gravity sword. Kiri jumps on him and clings to him so that she can take him back with her when she responds, but after a second, she is petrified. Tauda decides to fight Fate one-on-one -on -one while the others take care of Fate's subordinates. Tauda charges at Fate, but Fate easily blocks him and repels him outside. He quickly conjures some knives, raining down on Tauda, who deflects them. He manages to hit Fate here and there, but when he gets a call about a countdown clock that's appeared on Kiri's hand after she petrified, he tells Karin to let it count to zero. After an immense fight, Fate has the upper hand and grabs Tauda by the face, but Tauda uses his gravity sword to pull both down and crash into the same spot as his comrades. They all jump to touch Kiri as her petrification dissipates and she responds and teleports them to a cave. They find Yukaheim and Fate asks to be let go under the condition that he will answer each of their questions truthfully. Tauda asks Fate if he was the one who killed his parents and Fate admits it. Enraged, Tauda awakens his Magia Arabia. His hands change into dark claws emitting dark and evil powers but suddenly, the mark the stranger left on his back earlier finally summons another magic circle which Negi, his father, and the spirit he saw before manifests and starts talking to them. But Koromaru, under Yukiheim's orders which she telepathically told to him, destroys the mark before Negi can tell Tauda the truth. Tauda meets Yukiheim, and she finally tells him the truth about himself. He doesn't have any memory of his parents because he doesn't have parents. He is a clone of Negi Springfield, made from his genetics combined with the genetics of Asuna. He shares the news with his Korra, but reveals that he's only down because Yukaheim only took care of him because she was in love with his grandfather. He decides to join a martial arts tournament with his friends. But before, he meets Mizu's great-grandmother who was once Negi's student. Alongside her is the school's acting director, Mana Tatsumiya. They take him to a classroom where they used to be taught by Negi and reminisce about old times, and reveal to know that he's a clone, but they cherish him because he's exactly like their kind teacher. In the tournament, he's matched with the same hooded kid who bumped into him, Cutlass, who calls him brother. The two begin their fight and Cutlass proves to be way ahead of Tauda in strength and skill, he mercilessly beats him up. Tauda activates his Magia Arabia but Cutlass hits him with some magic knight harpoons that stab and pin him down to the ground. Tauda loses his mind and tries to go berserk on Cutlass, but the harpoons hold him in place. Tauda gets back to his senses after Cutlass's explanation that she's also one of Negi's failed clones. She reveals that she was just an opening act for an even bigger opponent, who appears right then, and it's none other than Negi Springfield. He asks Tauda to join him at the top of the tower, but before Tauda can say anything, Yukiheim shields Tauda, prompting Negi to wage a war on them. Tauda refuses the offer and gets sucked into another dimension where he meets Kitty, who shows him some memories of Yukaheim with Nagi, his great-grandfather, 
and with Negi. Tauda finally witnesses Yukaheim genuinely smiling out of love for Negi. But then, Kitty tells him that these aren't memories of the past, but an actual reality where Yukaheim even recognizes him. The mage of the beginning, the mage who's responsible for turning Yukaheim into a vampire, and the woman who's possessed Negi, captures Yukaheim. Tauda gets stabbed by the same old night harpoons and he falls to the grounds where Yukiheim has fallen. He crawls to her and takes her in his arms as he regenerates. She finally becomes vulnerable to him and shares that he is the only one she wanted to be with. The mage of the beginning shapeshifts into Nagi and Negi, seducing Yukiheim. Tauda calls her fickle for loving his ancestrals, but she replies that she only loved three men in her 700-year lifespan. Her only wish was to walk eternity with him. But the mage doesn't want that, she wants Yukiheim to summer forever. After vowing to be the person Yukiheim is looking for, Tauda gets dragged to another place by his UQ holder's comrades. The reality is the maid's fantasy where she controls everything so she can continue to torture them as she pleases. Tauda almost gives up and drowns in the imaginary water, but Asuna, his grandmother, appears in front of him and uses her giant sword to cut the fabric of the fantasy, revealing a calm beach with a clear sky. Tauda realizes that his UQ comrades were also dragged into this world. Asuna tells them to fight and stall the enemy for 37 seconds before she can do her thing and end the fight. The fight resumes and Tauda takes on the possessed Negi. Fate and Yukaheim try to seal him, causing the four of them to enter a time bubble where the three elders turn into their real younger selves. Fate tells Negi that he has a way to save him using Tauda but Negi tells him that he must kill him. Just right after coming back to reality, Negi breaks out of the seal looking very heavenly pale, and defeats Yukaheim and Fate immediately. Tauda quickly gets out of the way of the strike and activates the legendary form that Negi is using. He charges at Negi and their real fight begins. But still, Negi has the upper hand, flying into the sky and purposefully hitting Tauda into the tower over and over until he stabs him with spears. Tauda tries to resist and continue fighting but gets stabbed by one of Negi's followers, and he crashes down at the pre-event stadium. He reverts to his old self and is utterly disappointed that he couldn't defeat his grandfather. When Negi tries to end him once and for all, Kiri stands in front just to get stabbed and tortured by Cutlass. Tauda almost loses his mind over what he's seeing but Kiri reminds him that the plan was to stall them for 37 seconds and it's done reached that point. Suddenly, Nega's students appear and reveal every girl was in love with him, and that their memories were also used to create Tauda, revealing that Tauda has like, 150 grandmothers. Asuna appears and talks to Negi before the mage gets her grip on him again and takes over him. He agrees to retreat but asks Tauda to come to the top of the tower with an answer for him. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.